this is Daniel West. Happy to be on the Pear Blossom Press video channel on YouTube. Here with a fun Copic colored light up Christmas card featuring a new stamp set from Colorado Craft Company called Furry Christmas. Now we're going to use easy lights today. I've got a five pack here. I'm going to break one of these out and light up my Christmas tree with it. I'm going to show you what I'm going to use here. A, a note card I've already made. Um, a couple sheets of Express It card, which is Copic friendly. There's my stamp set, Furry Christmas. It's illustrated by Anita Jerem. It's storybook style. We're going to color it that way too. We've got some Sook Wing tape. And that's about it. It's a pretty simple card. I've also got some of the best um, foam tape in the world. And we're going to use that as well. So I pop my Express It card A2 sized panel in a Misty here and I'm going to ink it up with Hero Arts Intense Black ink. This is a Copic friendly ink. You want to make sure the ink you use will not smudge with alcohol markers no matter which brand you use. In here I'm just going to get a, a light inking of this. I don't want it to have any extra ink on the page because it can still smudge. First, I'm going to grab uh, my lightest color of green to uh, add in some color into my tree. This is my darkest shade, sorry. My darkest shade <clears throat> to add in the darkest colors. And then I'm going to go over with a lighter shade of green over that. And then I'll come back in and kind of touch it up in just a minute. But I want to make sure I don't cover over my little Christmas ornaments. I'm going to color those red. And I want to also make sure that I don't get it too blendy. You know, you can get things too blendy with storybook style coloring. You just want things kind of splotchy. And I want it to look like kind of watercolor. So I'm going to just add in this extra green here, here and there. And then I'll come back with my darker color again and fill in areas I think could use some depth, right? Now this is so easy. Anyone could do it. And you don't have to worry about it looking perfect or trying to find every nook and cranny to make it look exactly like a Christmas tree. You're going to get that image anyway. I mean, that's what your eyes see. And the tree is not really the focal point. It's the dog with the big old present in his mouth. Now that looks like a candy stick to me, but you know, it could just be a big, could be a big bone wrapped up, you know, who knows a giraffe leg. <laughs> so I grabbed after that, one of my reds, this is R35 and I'm just going to color each one real quick with that. And then I'm going to come in with an R89 and give it some dimension and then come back with my R35 and kind of blend that out just a little bit. And it looks like they have a bit of shape to them. They're not just two-dimensional. I see some white spaces peeking through here and there, and I want to correct that. So I'm going to get my green out again and fill those in. I missed a little ornament there on my tree. <laughs> now for the stripes, I'm going to add the R89 to the bottom and tops. And then I'm going to blend that out with a R56. And just... Make it look like it's rounded this way. You know, the light's hitting it at a certain angle. The red's going to show lighter in certain areas. Now for the bow here, I'm going to use the R89. I think it's a really striking color. And then I'm coming in with an R35. And I'm going to go over those stripes again with that R35. I decided I was going to color my dog tan. And I'll get to that in a sec. Because he looks like a little golden retriever. <laughs> but I'm adding in this uh, T3 here. It's a toner 3 color. And you can't really see it very well. In a second though, I'm going to turn down the light so you can see it a little better. See the, the cream color I'm laying down here? You can see it better when I dim the light just a little bit. So I cover the entire dog with that 
R31. And now I'm going to come in with R35 and add in some darker areas. And you see I'm just going splotchily in. I'm not being super precise with this. Just adding it in where I think he could use some texture or dimension. And since R35 and R31 are four numbers away, I want a number in between. So I put some R35 out on my glass mat and then picked it up with my R31. And that way I have kind of an in-between number. And I'm going to do the same for his face. Just kind of give him a little more blendy. He's still splotchy, which I like. But I wanted that in-between color as well. You can make your own colors with Copic, so go for it. Mix them up. So I think I'm finished with my dog. I just need his nose. And I picked a W7 for that, a warm gray. The presents are going to get all the same color wrapping paper. And this is part of just making a design cohesive. You don't want to go in with so many colors that it looks like a rainbow throw up on your project. So, I mean, unless that's the look you're going for, you're really looking for rainbow. I'm not looking for a rainbow here. I'm looking for classic Christmas colors. So I'm just going to limit my color palette to a few. Just green, red, gray, and a little bit of tan. I added some stripes, polka dots, to some of these, and I'm just going to color the floor. You know that's the skirt around the Christmas tree he's standing on. So I'm going to add the lighter green from the Christmas tree and then add some darker green for the shadows. And I think I missed a spot on the tree that I'm going to fix here in a second. But I'm letting the light kind of hit at, from the right and let the shadow fall to the left there. There's the spot I wanted to fix on the tree. There it is. He's all colored in. Only took me three days. Just kidding. It took me about 20 minutes to color that in. Now, as I stamped him the first time, I made sure I tucked him right in the corner of my Misty. And now I'm going to get my mini Misty out and pop him back in and put a cinnamon up at the top. This one says, Mary Posmus, I think. It's so cute. The sentiment is just perfect. Especially if the owner of the dog gets a Christmas card with the dog on it. I think it's really cool. You can color him in with the kind of colors that his dog looks like or her dog looks like, you know. Oh, it says happy, not merry. Happy Paula days. That's really cute. And now I'm just coming in and re-stamping the whole image with Versa Fine black onyx ink to make it really pop look how that just really pops and that's why you've got to always make sure you tuck your project into the corner now that versifying ink stays a little wet it's pigment ink so you may want to blast it with a heat tool i did that after a little bit because i didn't want to smudge the ink after it had sat a while it still wasn't dry now on this mini stamp set from pear blossom press this is these are like the press here push here stamps from Pear Blossom Press. They come with dies as well. I stamped out a piece of gray cardstock, which is really thick and light proof. And I stamped the image on there. And now I'm just poking holes through it with those little dies from Pear Blossom Press. I poked three holes through die cutting them with the coordinating dies. And now I've got a perfect a perfectly aligned tree to back my express it card that express it card is kind of thin and if i was just to back if i was just to put the lights in behind it, it would kind of make the whole tree glow or the whole front of the card glow and i didn't want that i just want the light to come through the holes in the around the ornaments so in order to do that i popped holes into the back of the cardstock and I backed the Espresso with that gray cardstock. Well, I'll show you how I put it together in just a minute. So let's get the world's best foam tape out. This foam tape is really great because it, it's adjustable. You can move it, put it down, and pick it right back up. After 24 hours, it's kind of set. But um, you've got a bit of time, wiggle room. I popped a little piece in the corner there because my two edges didn't meet. And you don't want any light seeping out the edge of your card. So think of light as glitter You don't want or in a shaker card. You don't want it coming out of the side. So make sure it's nice and sealed. 
I put some sook wing tape on the back of my my little light up mechanism and peeled the backing off and I'm just going to pop that into the bottom corner of my gray cardstock. This is what I would call the housing. <laughs> this is my light up housing. And then uh, I'm going to put my lights right in the center of each of those die cut holes, adding some sook wing tape or score tape, whatever you want to call it, right uh, over the the wires there, making sure that my lights are right in the center of the holes. And then I'm just going to carefully adjust my wires so that I can also tape those down in just a minute. Now, when I turn this on, after I put them near the holes for the first time, I noticed that they were not turned the right way so there's on these easy lights there is a, a backing on each of the lights and you want the light to come to the front right so all you have to do is kind of twist them and I'll show you how I did that in just a second you twist them and turn them until the light is all the way in the front and it's gonna shine right through that now this is a great option it's a feature, not a flaw, because you can turn the lights backwards to make the light less intense. But I wanted it to shine through pretty brightly. So I get all my wires taped down. And then I'm going to I'm going to add the, the front of the card there. See, here I just take my fingers and just kind of... Uh, spin the light around until it's set right where you want it. Right? It's kind of easier to see when you got it in your hands. <laughs> Here I'm heat setting my card front and poking holes into it right where the lights are. Because I want those lights to really shine through the front. And once I knew where the holes should go, I just pulled that card front back out and took my pokey tool and pushed a hole all the way through, made it bigger. And now it's ready to go. So I grabbed some tape runner. You don't want to use liquid adhesive on the back of Express It card because it's really kind of thin. So you want to use something that's dry. So here I grabbed this tape runner. It's from scrapbook.com. And just popped the front of my card onto the backing there. I think this dog is so cute. <laughs> Just look at him, he's so happy. Classic golden retriever. Now you see my light, my cards light up. You can see the lights come right through the front of that. I peeled the back of my foam tape off halfway on each of those. This just gives me the opportunity to move it a little more easily without having to peel it all the way off my card base, potentially warping my card base if I needed to move it. Uh, but once I put it in place, I can just press those down and then peel those uh, tape backing right off easily. It's a great tip. I learned that from, I think, from Ellen Hudson. <laughs> now, here is my little instruction stamp. I'm just going to put that right on the front there with some Versa Fine Black Onyx Ink. Find the place for it. Just kind of stamp it with my acrylic block here. All of the things I used for my video are going to be in the description box below. Take a look down there. You can click those links and shop for any of these products. I'm thankful that you've spent some time with me here today and I hope you enjoyed our little adventure into Copic cards and lighting them up. I had fun anyway. I hope you have a wonderful day and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. Take care.